Hello everyone, my name is Kasia Równy and I work for Center for Science and Research at Dr. Irena Eris Cosmetic Laboratories in Poland. And today I would like to tell you about the poster that we prepared for ESDR conference in Porto. Uh, so the title is Skin Anti-Aging Effects of Mitochondrial Potassium Channels Regulation by Naranjanin. So here we will touch a lot of different aspects of skin aging. Um, it's been associated with a decline in mitochondrial function, uh, with also decrease with increase in uh, inflammatory biomarkers such as interleukin six, uh, and the general accumulation of damage uh, by excessive uh, reactive oxygen species. Um, so we've been looking into potassium channels in skin cells, in the mitochondria of skin cells before. We were actually, together with our collaborators from Nensky Institute, we were the first ones to characterize them, to describe them. And now we're looking into um, an ingredient. Uh, we have found the ingredient that actually regulates the activity of those potassium channels in the mitochondria of the skin cells, uh, both fibroblast and keratinocytes. So the activation means that we can um, increase the frequency of opening and closing of those channels, and therefore the mitochondria can uh, exchange um, different uh, metabolites with the um, outside of the organella, but mostly just kind of purify itself from too much uh, reactive oxygen species. And today uh, we would like to show you um, the results of our in vitro and in vivo research to test naringenin as a topical ingredient that targets uh, the mitochondrial skin aging. Naringenin uh, that we tested here is a bioflavonoid that is abandoned in citrus fruit, uh, so it's quite easily accessible. And um, let me show you what it does. So first of all, we have um, tested the, the potassium channels and we have used the patch clamp method uh, here. So first the, the mitochondria had to be prepped out of um, the fibroblasts, human primary fibroblasts, uh, and then uh, we had the preparation of mitoplasts and we were able to um, check the, uh, the, um, the voltage the, uh, of, the, um, of the potassium channels in mitochondria um, without and with treatment of naringenin. And you can see in panel B um, the control without any naringenin and then with 10 micromolar solution of naringenin, we can see that the frequency of the activation of those potassium channel is much higher, which means that the channel is basically opening and closing. We can say that uh, to better explain that. So uh, we can see that naringenin in fact does improve um, the, the activation of those ATP dependent potassium channels in mitochondria. We have also checked the calcium ion dependent um, mitochondrial uh, potassium channels and uh, we have here similar results of activation of, of those channels by naringenin uh, in different types of uh, voltage. Later on, we have checked uh, SOD levels, SOD2 levels, the enzyme, um, and in the first panel, the blue uh, results are the control and the cells treated with naringenin. Uh, you can see the higher level of, uh, of the enzyme in the treated cells, but also after irradiation with UVA, um, we see the same effect. So um, even when the inflammatory processes are started, we see also the improved SOD level in uh, the cells treated with naringenin. Subsequently, we have looked at the, um, the morphology of uh, the fibroblasts in confocal microscopy. In panel A, we see just the control untreated cells. Uh, in panel B, we have cells treated with naringenin solution. And then uh, panel C, we have untreated cells after exposition to UVA radiation. Uh, and we can see here um, the mitochondria are in red and they are not very visible, they're not very vivid, they are kind of blurry, which indicates the decrease in the number and quality of mitochondria. And in panel D, those cells have been treated with UVA, but also with naringenin, and we see that it's pretty much, the, the image, the morphology is quite identical to the uh, cells that were 
not irradiated. So the effect of the irradiation was kind of uh, neutralized by naringenin. Uh, later, we have uh, tested also the influence of naringenin treatment uh, and also UVA irradiation on the level of respiratory chain um, subunits. Uh, and uh, the dark blue uh, bars show us just the control, untreated control. Then we have uh, the light blue that is uh, cells treated with naringenin. And then we go into the two um, values for cells treated with UVA radiation. So the dark green is the control treated with UVA radiation, and then the light green is control treated with UVA, but also with naringenin. So we see here the protective effect of uh, naringenin. Uh, pretty much in all of the um, in all of the bars, we can see that the um, that the the light blue and light green are much higher. So we see that the expression of those respiratory chain subunits is much more efficient with the presence of naringenin solution. And the last one, the last in vitro assay. Uh, here we see uh, it was based on ELISA experiment. Okay, one second. Um, one second. Uh, and uh, here we measure, it. the bars actually show the viability of the cells in the experiment and the dots connected with lines, they show the level of interleukin-6. So, uh, of course, uh, and then uh, the, the green values are without any irradiation and the red values show irradiation after irradiation with UVB. Uh, so first, the green ones, uh, if you look at the, at the little squares and the line, uh, of course, the levels of the concentration of interleukin-6 is very low. And then, of course, after in the control, the red dot shows the increase in concentration of interleukin-6 after irradiating the cells with UVB radiation. So um, then we can see that from the high level, it goes down while the concentration of naringenin in the solution increases. So the more naringenin, we can see the protective effect and the decrease of interleukin-6 in the cells. So that's a very interesting anti-inflammatory property of, uh, of naringenin. And let's move on to the in vivo results. We have um, tested the formulation that contained naringenin. Uh, our emulsion number 5552. Uh, we had 19 subjects in most of the measurements. We have measured uh, the properties of the skin in terms of the smoothness and the skin color. Um, so the smoothness, of course, tells us uh, the reduction of wrinkles and the improvement of the, of the texture of the skin and the color, both melanin and erythema, um, show us also the healthy uh, appearance of the skin. And so we had the um, in major increase in the properties of skin smoothness. We have reduction of scaliness, increase in smoothness, a reduction in depth, number and volume volume of wrinkles uh, in um, between uh, 58 and 74 percent of all of the subjects. Uh, you have also uh, here an average improvement in the whole group after four weeks of use. Um, so um, those results were very promising. And then um, also we, we see the, the gentle skin lightening, brightening effect. So the decrease in melanin level uh, by 9% in all of the group, but 11% in the 86% of subjects that actually had improvement. And then we see the decrease in erythema that can, for example, indicate some, um, some inflammatory state in the skin by 11% in all of the group and 15% in uh, the 76% of subjects that actually saw improvement. We also used Primos uh, the device that can show us the, the, the changes in volume and depth of wrinkles. Uh, and here we see the nosolabial fold picture of, uh, of a 64-year-old subject uh, before and after four weeks of application of the emulsion. Uh, we have uh, 23 decrease in the volume of the wrinkle. Uh, so this is 9.5 cube millimeter. And uh, we can also, with the same device, uh, generate this, those um, graphs. The, the black line shows us the 
the profile of the wrinkle before the treatment and the blue one shows us the profile after the treatment and we can see that the difference in depth uh, was uh, almost 850 micrometers which sounds like uh, not very much but it's a visible improvement on the skin. So in conclusion um, the outcome of the study um, suggests that naringenin has high potential in topical application against mitochondrial aging uh, through regulation of uh, mitochondrial potassium channels in skin cells. Uh, furthermore, we show here that naringenin also decreases levels of interleukin-6, um, so it kind of blocks the inflammatory pathways in cells and it can reduce the damage caused by reactive oxygen species. Thank you very much.